Hello, everyone. Welcome, uh, welcome to the uh, Redfish 2024.3 release uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Jeff Otter I, with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and I'm one of the co-chairs of the DMTF Redfish Forum. Uh, and with me is uh, Mike Ranieri. Say hi, Mike. Hi, hi, everyone. I'm Mike Ranieri from Dell Technologies, and I'm the other co-chair of the Redfish Forum. So let's uh, let's get into it then. Uh, and before we get into the details of this release, uh, just some reminders of some of the uh, the resources that are available uh, to everyone uh, as they try to to either implement or uh, uh, or use uh, Redfish in their uh, in for all their management tasks. Uh, on every release uh, of the Redfish uh, data model, uh, we generate some documents uh, that are. Uh, targeted for both implementers and for end users uh, to help explain the contents uh, of all the JSON payloads. Uh, there, there is a more comprehensive version, and that's the first one listed here, this, uh, this Redfish data model specification. Uh, that has all the normative text and all the things you, details that you may need uh, to implement uh, a Redfish service. Uh, if you're just trying to use uh, the service from, you know, from one of your vendors, uh, the Redfish resource and schema guide uh, is a smaller version of that doc that, that just shows the, what we call the informational text, but, but really targeted more for uh, for end users. Uh, separately, uh, there is a, another document called the uh, Redfish Message Registry Guide, and that is a guide document that uh, shows uh, all of the uh, all of the standard uh, error and event messages that have been defined uh, for Redfish interfaces. Uh, and lastly, there's a property guide if you're trying to look uh, look up as an index and and uh, look for property names alphabetical. Uh, that will take you to uh, where they where you can find those particulars uh, within the, the within the uh, Redfish schemas. Uh, and all that material, and we'll, and I'll, we'll remind you this at the end, but the, all of the, all of our materials are available uh, from the Redfish Developer Hub, and we'll give you some pointers to the uh, to the various uh, repositories uh, and and other links. Uh, but one thing to call attention to, something that we added, I believe, about a year ago, uh, is a GitHub repo uh, that that is public uh, called Redfish Publications. Uh, this uh, repository contains. Uh, copies of the uh, the message registries and the schemas. And uh, recently we added the mockups, uh, which is not shown on this list, uh, but uh, those are all organized uh, effectively exploding out the contents of DSP 8010 and DSP 8011 uh, to uh, to provide a, a a GitHub mechanism for you to keep up to date with those. So if you just clone the Redfish Publications repo, uh, you can keep that in sync with the the latest Redfish releases. Uh, and then lastly, uh, again, pointers off to a, a lot of repos, uh, but there are a number of conformance tools to help you either uh, debug your own implementation uh, or as a customer, if you're trying to understand what, you know, what is going on with, uh, with you know, with one implementation versus another, uh, there are a couple validator tools uh, that look at both the, uh, the HTTP uh, protocol aspects of the specification uh, and also conformance with the, the Redfish schema, and that's the the uh, service validator. So uh, these tools have been available for quite a while. They're pretty hardened. So uh, if you come across a problem, uh, it's probably con probably time to talk to your vendor. All right, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike and let him uh, walk you through the the uh, new materials for this release. All right, thanks, Jeff. So. Uh, I'm sure everyone is here for the 2024.3 release, so let's so let's go through the uh, the items that we published. Uh, so first up, we have a new minor version of the Redfish specification, version 1.21.0. Uh, the main addition here is we added a new clause around uh, time-based one-time password secret key handling, in particular how to handle authentication requests when a user has not yet configured their uh, secret key for generating time-based one-time passwords. And we'll talk more about that in the uh, next few slides. Uh, we also came out with an errata release version 1.20.2. Uh, we added a, uh, a well-known URI for how to track local copies of your registry files. So standardizing on Redfish V1's uh, registries as the, uh, the starting point of a well-known URI. Uh, we also made some minor updates to the, the naming rules clause of the specification. And we also clarified uh, the usage of the password change required uh, uh, error responses to correctly reflect that uh, uh, 
they're shown in error payloads, not just in kind of an open-ended payload that's so loosely interpreted. Uh, we also have a new version of DSP 8010. Uh, in addition to a new version of the message registry bundle for DSP 8011, the highlight in 8011 is that we added two new, pro uh, two new messages, property not modified and generate secret key required. Within the 8010 bundle, we have 18 updated schemas. Uh, the, the contents of 8010 have the, uh, the full release notes for what, what went into it, but some of the highlights include uh, adding username and user authentication source to the event, log entry, message, and resource schemas. And the purpose of this was to add breadcrumbs for event auditing. So let's say a user performs a power down request and you log a message saying, uh, system five power down. Uh, we now have properties that allow you to tie it back to an individual who may have initiated that type of request. Uh, we also added in uh, new properties to and actions to account service and manager account for for a more generalized time-based one-time password management. And yeah, again, we'll we'll show those on the next few slides. And then we also added uh, local account types and local OEM account types to the role mapping property in both account service and external account provider. And the purpose of this is to uh, further uh, control access for what types of features a user is able to access when they're uh, authenticating through an external account provider like LDAP or Active Directory. Maybe you want to restrict those users to only have Redfish access and not have SSH access to your system. So it, it gives you that type of uh, configurability now. Uh, so onto time-based one-time passwords, uh, we added in uh, some new actions to manage your account. We have generate secret key, clear secret key, and verify time-based one-time password. Uh, this allows a user to generate a secret key that's then subsequently used to produce RFC 6238 defined tokens. And so this uh, so RFC 6238 has all the semantics for, you know, what is a time-based one-time password and how it's used to calculate a, a, a token from a secret key. And so that secret key uh, is then retained by the service for future token verification, but it's also uh, retained in, in secret. So it's like when you uh, set up multi-factor authentication on a, on a web service, Maybe you're told to snap a, Q, a picture of a QR code. It's it's just like that. You get that time bit. You get that secret key coming back from the service. You as a client need to retain that, and then you you use that for the uh, for future operations. Uh, we also added a more generic time-based one-time password property to the multi-factor auth property in account service. And so this is to configure your basic usage of RFC 6238 defined time-based one-time password settings. We still have Microsoft Authenticator and Google Authenticator properties. Um, both of these do tend to heavily leverage time-based one-time passwords, but we don't want to strictly deprecate these properties because there may be specific features and functions that you need to control individually later on. And so we, we've left these around, but if you're doing generic time-based one-time password management, we have a new property just for that. And then lastly, we added a new generate secret key required message to the base message registry. So this is for the condition where a user attempts to authenticate to a service that requires uh, time-based one-time passwords, but the user hasn't yet generated their own secret keys. So kind of like how we have password change required handling to allow a user to change their password on initial login. This is the same type of method where we can allow a user to log in only uh, and uh, restrict their usage to just generating their secret key, and then they can re-authenticate again and have uh, their, their normal access. So some examples for how these types of flows work. So the, the, the simple case is uh, the user generates their secret key from this new generate secret key action. So they, they would invoke this on their user account in particular. So in this case, Bob is generating their own secret key. Uh, there are no input parameters, so just providing an empty JSON object. And then the service responds with a, a single property in the, in the response, so secret key, and then a, a string that's just a, a hex encoded uh, a set of uh, digits. So this is the uh, value that the user needs to save for future usage. Um, 
And so they'll use this in the uh, the next step where they try to create a session. So, so once you, you have your secret key, uh, you do post to the session collection as as normal to to uh, to get your session tokens. Uh, in addition to the username and password, you provide that the new token value, and this string would be calculated based on the secret key value, in addition to the uh, the system clock of the of the client. So. Uh, the the RFC for time based one time passwords describes how to use this how to calculate that token from the uh, uh, from a combination of the secret key and the um, and the system clock time and if uh, the token matches and the service is able to compute the, the same token then the uh, session is created as normal now. Let's say a new user is provisioned on a service and time-based one-time passwords is enabled. By default, that user is not going to have a secret key available. So they would try to log in initially without the token parameter. So they would log in, you know, username and password. They would get back a session, but uh, in, the, uh, in the annotations below, they have a message that says, hey, you need to, do, uh, you need to generate a new secret key. And so the uh, like with the change uh, uh, password change required message, uh, the message argument re can redirect the user to where they need to perform the operation. So in this case, the message argument gives them the explicit path to the uh, generate secret key action where they can uh, where they can generate and save off their secret key for future usage. All right, so uh, I guess we'll, we'll go into questions and answers. So. Uh, Don't see any hands up right now, but uh, we do. We did have one question that had been uh, uh, had been sent in uh, during registration for the webinar. So let me read that. Uh, so the question is: uh, Is Redfish evolving to support emerging technologies like edge computing, AI-driven systems, or multi-cloud environments? Uh, so I will say yes uh, to that. Uh, we do get continual requests to evolve the Redfish standard, and there are some new features and functions that come. Uh, that that are that slowly come in over time to to help enable these types of use cases. Uh, one of the recent additions has been the outbound connection uh, uh, resources, which allows a user to create web sockets and use that as a way to tunnel Redfish uh, uh, requests through uh, what could be a private firewall. So so in the cloud or edge environment, maybe systems are kind of isolated behind a firewall. But setting up a web web socket from the Redfish service going outside to a trusted client is necessary to perform systems management. So that that came in a couple of years ago and and was really targeting those uh, types of edge use cases. For AI driven systems, uh, you know we continually get feedback for uh, for properties to add to the CPU and memory model to support uh, to support the various types of GPUs. So having all the sorts of metrics and telemetry and reporting over time for uh, uh, for for uh, for all the 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 AI driven systems. Um, anything else you'd like to add to that, Jeff? Uh, no, I think that kind of covers it. Uh, I mean, and, and a lot of the same things that we would talk about for the edge computing, uh, you know, the, the outbound connection. I think that also would would apply very much to multi cloud environments when you're trying to. To, you know, to, to again to get through those, uh, you know, to to be able to get information in and out through those firewalls without having to do uh, a lot of uh, you know very specific configuration. Mm -hmm. All right. So, any other any other questions? So, just uh, just a reminder uh, that uh, once we uh, complete this uh, webinar, we will move to a uh, uh, to the open roundtable. That's not part of a not part of the webinar, not part of the recording. So, if you if you'd like to ask a question. Uh, if you want to hold that for the, for a more open discussion there, uh, that's fine too. Uh, so uh, while, while we wait to see if anyone is brave enough to ask any more questions, uh, just to finish up. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 and, we, and when I started off, uh, we, you know, said there were some uh, lots of resources available. Uh, so here are the the pointers to all those resources. The the first one is uh, the the official standards page at dmtf.org slash standards slash redfish. Uh, that has all of the uh, all the documents, the specifications, uh, you know, all of the materials that, that are part of the standard effort uh, available or are available there. 
Uh, more generally at redfish.dmtf.org is the Redfish developer portal. That will take, uh, that will give you links to everything that we're involved with for the Redfish ecosystem, uh, including links to to the standards page, to the uh, GitHub repos, uh, you know, and, and a whole bunch of other materials, uh, ed, you know, educational materials that are available on that portal. So uh, if you uh, if you are listening to this recording and didn't get a chance to answer, ask a question live, uh, we do have an end user forum at redfishforum.com uh, and that is the place for you to come uh, ask questions. We do go through those uh, continuously and try to make sure that we uh, answer anything that comes in. Uh, and if you have uh, information that you'd like to contribute or some some items that would like to see part of the Redfish standard, uh, there is the DMTF feedback portal. You can uh, contribute that uh, that information and uh, and and hopefully uh, hopefully we take it into the standard. All right, I'm still not seeing any brave souls uh, willing to ask questions uh, in the in the live chat. So. Uh, so I think with that, uh, we will uh, end the webinar and we will move on to the to the roundtable. So uh, thank you everyone for your attention and, and have a good day.